All right, guys, welcome back to Seat Story Cup 4 on the B stream. I am Firebat, and I'm joined with Super JJ, and we are here to cast Alesh versus Zixo. This is the loser's match, so one of these players is facing elimination. Oh, that's going to be a good one, right? I mean, I'm hyped. Yeah, I'm hyped too. I can tell you're excited. Yeah, I do them like super. Just, like, just, like, <laughs> super, super JJ is super, dude. Dude, wow. Pirate, you got it. Yeah, and so we have like. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> okay, where we go? We have like uh, six with mage, warrior, shaman, and okay. druid. Sure. And a druid got banned. Druid did get banned, yeah. So we have Alice with mage, warrior, warlock, and druid, and the warrior got banned. Mm -hmm. So I assume six was playing freeze mage, patron warrior, and mid range shaman. Uh, he is playing mid range shaman, patron warrior, and freeze mage. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so and he's against probably freeze mage, uh, demon handlock, and uh, mid range druid. Yeah. So who do you think is favored? Whew, that's a tough one. I mean, the freeze mage is going to do some work. Um, I mean, once no. he gets over the druid, the freeze mage can go. So we just have to start Q with shaman into druid, right? I win this one, and then. Sounds like a plan to me. I mean, you yeah. can't go like that, like, definitely. Definitely. So you're saying Zixo's ahead? Yeah. Out of the opening gates, Super JJ predicts Zixo's ahead. What do you guys at home think? Mm. Hey, dude, it's, it's happening, right? It's I happening. Mean, it's I happening guess. right now. But uh, that's a Warlock. Okay. But I think Shaman does pretty well against Warlock. You got Hex, you got Earthshock. Yeah, and you got a Manatite Totem. Yeah, Manatite Totem's sick because uh, Warlock doesn't usually develop threats until turn four. Manatite Totem comes out at turn three. So you're going to need to use removal from hand to try and clean that guy up, and he's going to be drawing some curds. Seems like a plan. Seems like a plan. We, 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 we were in it? In it to win it? All the totems are in it to win it, okay. of course. Totemic Might. Shaman apparently is a good class. Dude, Shaman is like... Making a comeback. It's on the A stream as well at it's the moment. It's on the A stream. It's on the B stream. It's, it's on, on both streams. Dude, it's everywhere. It's on the C stream. It's on the D stream. You can't hold Shaman down. No, man. The elements will destroy you. Every time. Every time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> God, we are good at this. Uh, okay. I, I think we, we, are, we got this, Firebat. We got this. We figured out the whole strategy. Yeah. The, the Why are we not playing at a tournament? Oh, I know. Wait. We would be crushing it. Um... So we have like, that's a that's egg tastic. Egg tastic. He's got a full set of two eggs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he's gonna go with the totem golem though over yeah. the, the eggs. Oh no. oh no! I didn't. I don't know how to play shaman. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I thought the class was dead. I mean, you gotta bring out the egg power first. Sure. So summon the death rattles first, so that you can use them to trade up into things later. Makes some sense. I mean, my Manatite Totem is not too bad there. Mm -hmm. And Tusk Totemic is basically a second Manatite. Yeah, every time. I usually every, get Manatite. It, it happens it. every time when I'm getting wrecked. Every time. So we have a... Hmm. That's weird. You can use your mana most efficiently with Total Golem Nerubian Egg, but Tusk Totemic likely provides more power on the board. But he is going to go with the mana efficient play. Maybe try and uh, lead into Feral Spirits next turn since his board is so AoE res resilient. I mean, it sounds weird, but these eggs are doing some work because Shaman is vulnerable to AoE, but mm -hmm. these eggs, man? They are not vulnerable to AoE at all. <sighs> no Earthshock, never lucky, but... Oh, 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 you can taunt him up. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, you taunt him up. That's yeah, nice. definitely. Activate double egg there. That is sick. Okay. Not too much better than that. Uh. And Alesh is in a heap of trouble at the face of double eggs. Oh, that is a... I think Shadow Flame is a good card. Uh, yeah, he's got to be able to pop both the eggs first, though. Yeah, okay. he can't do it, right? Dark bomb? I no, he has use of dark bomb. Uh, he's got like hellfire. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hellfire would set up for shadow flame next turn. I I kind of like just playing Belcher and chilling. Yeah. Yeah. That just just wait, let things happen, and then you can trade into both the eggs next turn. Then watch your shadow flame to clear off the board. Take it slow. Do it on your own pace. Dude, that's insane. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. We do that, right? Yeah, for sure. I think it's definitely the Belcher that's going to be coming down. Elesh is going to think about it for a little bit. He's at the face of this huge board. No idea what to do. So many threats in play. Mm. It's definitely a puzzle. Shaman has one problem. It's card draw. Oh, for sure. And with that Mana Tide totem gone, he's going to need to really RNG the Tuskar Totamic. Keep that card draw flowing. Just go, it. go, for, go with the flow. Go with the flow. 
the mana flow. Oh, he is going to go with Hellfire. Oh, he oh, feels oh. like he's under a but lot of pressure. what if six or top decks like a Bloodlust? I guess. Oh, no, it's... Oh, the board is gone. Oh. Yeah, he Hellfire. So the Bloodlust does nothing. The Drake kind of contests on board. Uh, Hex is kind of useless, so go... Yeah, just get the Mana Tide rolling. Yeah, I think you Tuscar and then just do a regular Totem. And so then you bring some face. Dude, I love, love this guy. <laughs> what, what What is that? The card's busted. Yeah? Call Blizzard technical support, man. That's supposed to be a Mana Tide Totem. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Man, rock why does the this is not fair? Like the warlock has so many cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hero power of the warlock does tend to give him the card advantage. But uh, uh, Shaman's threatening a lot of damage on the board, and that's the kind of opportunity cost. I mean, he has to watch your shadow flame, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then he surrenders all the tempo back to Zixo, and Zixo's able to pipe. And Zixo will just go with and like feral spirits. Yeah, shredder and feral. It's really good. And when when there's like a bloodlust top deck. Oh yeah, then the bloodlust top deck, of Ooh. course, mm. always happens like that. So this always happens. So how is he gonna? Maybe you don't Shadow Flame yet. I think you're not under too much pressure since you're there's two like O2 totems that don't really do too much. I think you could justify like setting up taunts this turn, maybe taking a little bit more damage, trying to get Molten's down and Shadow Flame on a turn where it's more swingy than just surrendering the tempo back to your opponent. Because you got like Watcher Argus this turn potentially if you wanted it. You could even just play Belcher, I think, and you're not at any risk of dying. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think it's too early to AoE, but... This is like, the AoE is so well you build against Shaman, mm -hmm. you've got to value it. But uh, if Sixo gets the Blood... Like, Bloodlust is a good card against Warlock. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good against card against Warlock. Yeah. Ah, there's the Watcher. Yeah, there's no yeah. reason holding back the coin, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like this play. I like this play. I like... Yeah. Uh, and now he's got the Watcher okay. down, so he can use oh, Shadow Oh, yeah, and he's just... Slams Drake right off the top so quick that it breaks Observer Mode. He was excited about that draw. Yeah. Definitely a good card to get. Um, yeah, we didn't see the card that Drake drew, so that means it's bugged. So let's rejoin. That's a, that's a Drake. Yeah, that is a Drake. Uh, <laughs> All right, so rejoining. And we're going to see if we can get this Drake landed on the ground. Sometimes they get away from us. All right, the game progressed a little bit. It looks like he drew Fire Elemental off the Drake. And then Alesh is taking his turn by uh, using the Iron Beak Owl to clear, developing a new Watcher. Okay, very defensive line. He still he held on to their Shadow Flame. I mean, the Hex is for the Giants, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Fire Elemental. That guy's going to do a lot tasty. of work. <laughs> very I mean, tasty. This, this, this Shadow Flame is quite not good enough. You might just chill. This Argus seems good. I don't know. Like, yeah. Void Caller from the top as well, so you... Yeah, you might just, like, ta yeah. taunt Void up. Caller Argus seems really strong, or even just Molten Argus seems really good. Mm -hmm. Getting these Moltens out of your hand so that you can then play Jiraxis, because after you play Jiraxis, the Molten Giant cost actually goes up. Yeah. Because it changes your base health to 15 instead of 30. Mm. I like it a lot. Like, you just... Uh, I mean, the, the Jiraxis body is also not too bad if you get it out. Yeah, it's some good hex bait to try and make the molten stick so the double hex is going to do a lot of work there's dr boom but can't be played by now yeah well he's definitely too too scary to play dr boom there's too much damage present on the board i think that tab justifies that he's going to go with the molten taunt no no we see an iron beak owl coming down he's going to try and activate the watcher for value trades no he pulls it back he's mm -hmm. thinking about it though it's kind of uh, awkward because I guess he has oh. enough cards he's going with the shadow flame and then playing out the molten holding back the taunts for more value Expecting that the first Molten he plays is going to be taunted. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, sure. it's going to be hexed. So Ooh, no Smork Hammer. Oh. <laughs> that is a really good card against Warlock. Allows for a lot of damage potential that they can't really interact too much with. If there will be a Rockbiter weapon, mm -hmm. there Wrong. will be a dead Warlock as well soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Right, you just hex it? Oh, yeah. Definitely. You can't let that 8-8 stick around. Even though you got that Taunt Totem, that O2 is not stopping an 8-8 for very long. Mm -hmm. Like second molten Gangs. coming down. Yeah, second hex, nice. <laughs> yeah. Will he will he be like so confident enough to play the Doctor Boom alongside with it? I mean, he has no taunt in the hand, right? He's, still, uh, he's got the frog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the frog <laughs> protection, man. <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> yeah, he can take a hit at least. Mm. I mean, guys, have you ever hound mastered a frog? Frogs are awesome. Frogs are pretty good. Herbit activates kill command. If he plays Sarad, he can get a kill command and hit for five. Oh, nice. <laughs> 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 All right, Molten Giant's coming out. And then Dr. Boom, he okay. does feel very safe so behind the frog. Yeah. 
Loves the protection. And he's going to be rewarded for taking this risk. Because uh, Zixo does not have the burst potential behind this to really punish this very aggressive line from Alesh. So I mean, heal bot into Argus next turn just... Wow. Yeah, that's insane. That's going to stop a lot of Zixos possible. I mean, pressure. there's a point against Handlocks where you better seal the deal. <laughs> yeah, th th this is it right here. This is where you have to seal the deal. This is like the turn where you better kill him. Yeah, yeah. This is where they take the big risk and you have to kill them. Otherwise, they start turning it around. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, Zixo can't make it happen. So now he's got to figure out an alternate game plan. What is his... What is he going to do? It looks like he's going to try and uh, flood the board because he's seen so many of the AoEs used, and he's not even going to use the Hex this turn. He's going to hold back the Hex and try and save it to use just on taunts so he can try and power through the taunts and uh, deal lethal damage. And I like this line. We've seen the Hellfire. We've seen the Shadow Flame. So uh, it's unlikely for Alesh to have a third AoE spell in his hand. That's true. I mean, the Hex will kind of help get through one big threat, but the boom is still there. I guess mm -hmm. you just trade one boom bot, and, uh, boom bot, and when you go with the Argus... Yeah, yeah. He there will also be, like, the, the heal bot that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Alesh definitely has a lot of offensive, uh, defensive capabilities, and he has the Jaraxxus to follow up behind this on the next turn. There's, like, so one problem as Shaman. Once it runs out of steam, it n normally loses. Yeah, yeah. They don't have the, the recovery mechanisms for when they they're start fizzling out. Yeah, that's true. They don't have any, like, draw two cards or anything, like no arcane yeah, or yeah, whatever. that's true. At least not in the current mid-range Shaman builds. They could run that that one overload card. Yeah, it was two overload even, right? Yeah, yeah, the ancestral knowledge. Yeah, yeah. That feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> Never a good card draw engine, baby rage. Yeah, but it, it would be good in this matchup particularly, but not in a lot of others. So yeah, we are gonna see the Heelbot Argus come down, it looks like. He's motioning over the Heelbot currently. Getting the four to the phase. But the phase damage on the sh um, shaman is like not that relevant. Yeah, you're gonna win by fizzling them out and getting board control, yeah, not really by exactly. just direct damage. Uh, Turn Gorn does nothing. Yeah, that is not the card he's looking for. And because of the overload, he can't hex and develop fire elemental, so it gets kind of awkward here. But he can clear the board of the boom and the uh, mount molten giant. Ah, oh, that's oh. bad. That's crucial. That's actually crucial. Yeah, yeah. Just any little bit of extra chip damage that he could possibly mm -hmm. find here would have been amazing. So you hex the Molten for sure, but what are you hoping for? Well, you're hoping he runs out of stuff. Yeah. You're hoping there's no Jaraxxus. That's one problem. <laughs> this doesn't happen to Headlock. Like, we don't run out of stuff. Yeah, yeah. They, they just tap and tap and tap and have more yeah, and more stuff. Yeah, it's just really bad. Mm -hmm. He's going to take eight damage to get rid of this Dr. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. BJH is not too good, but hmm. is even Jaraxxus worth, worth it here? Uh, I guess you just want to clear the board as well as you can, so... I mean, just being able to make 6-6s... Six So he has to make a trade here. Well, with the Fire Elemental, most likely it'd be fine. He better holds back with this Flame Tongue um, Totem, though, because BGH is a card. Mm -hmm. And this this is a good Totem. Yeah, Taunt Totem is the one you want, for yeah, sure. And now, obviously, push all the damage face and just try and kill your opponent next turn. Oh, no, he's going to protect his Taunt Totem, try and make three trade into it instead of two trading into it. Yeah, it's really good. Um... Handlock still this really important thing like the only card that's really good in the left hand is like the Sun Fury Protector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's running out of steam actually himself, but he can make six sixes forever now. What would be good would be a demon for the white collar. A shadow flame would be insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. But he already used one, so it's not that likely. 
Yeah, for sure. Doomhammer is a card. Uh, Ten cards tried tried that's mm, vulnerable to Earth Shock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you don't have much choice, though. He's got to play that, and he's got a hero power, and uh, mm -hmm. taunt him up and hope. I mean, the thing is, if you taunt, that, taunt up the Void Collar, you at least have the free, the free free body left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How common is Earthshock and Shaman these days, anyway? Wow. But this Shaman, man, he's like, he's fighting against the Demon Lord himself. Yeah, he's getting uh, pretty close, actually. So, mm. what can he do? Just kills the Taunt Totem here, and... Then Xixx has an other four to the face. Mm. So Rock Biter is still lethal. Yeah. Does Bloodlust do it though? I don't think so, right? No. Yeah, uh, the trades aren't clean enough. Uh, why that? He's gonna silence the Taunt Totem. Ah, that, that, that's a weird line. I mean, he has to kill it anyways, not. He uh, just wants to have the extra. If he wants to body. play around like Flame Tongue and uh, Bloodlust, oh, he should. Great. But he's gonna try and set up lethal for next turn. Yeah, I guess so. A little bit of a greedy play. Rockbiter is lethal, and that's not it. Does, Does that it help? help? It buffs up. No. It's only eight damage to the face wow. they can get through. Right? So close, like yeah. really, like running on <laughs> the edge. Two damage off lethal this turn. Yeah. Is there any way he can squeeze out any more points of damage? Like Sixa doesn't look too happy about that. Wait, can he get? Wait, he can go. You can put the flame tongue here, trade that here, and then this is up to two, and then. I mean, it doesn't matter. You, uh, uh, you can't get a taunt totem. Uh, actually, you ha if you trade a taunt totem, and then get an other one, but when the ex inspire mechanic doesn't catch up, so it doesn't work. Yeah, if he was able to use his face on one of these two taunts, actually, he could break through and have lethal, huh? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But he can't actually use his face to make the trades more clean. So that face attack by Alesh actually. Uh, prevents him from getting the value trades that he needs. There's just a... Uh, uh, has he figured it out? Is there a way? Oh wait, this totem gets buffed as well. Yeah, it is a totem. But uh... It's just um, seven still. Yeah, it's still just not enough. No, yeah. that's it. So, that um... Xixos Shaman falls. Feels Immediately, bad. yeah. So We've seen that twice now. Gar's Shaman fell immediately first game mm. of the last series, and now he Zixo's Shaman falls. Yeah, like... Uh, Maybe Shaman isn't good? It was close. Come it on. Was like, it was come close. On. Okay. <laughs> you can't say it like that. Okay, okay. It was pretty close, but I don't know, man. The results are coming in, and Shaman is not doing the greatest. It's interesting. Like, back in the day, Shaman was, like, super favored against Handlock, but how it changed. Like, the AoE is so effective against it. Yeah, the AoE is crazy crazy strong against it. So he's going with the freeze mage. Yeah, this this matchup is actually pretty good for the mage. Yeah. If I are not like the problematic turns are like the, if I have like giants. If the warlock has Early giant, giants, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a problem. 8 power is pretty tough cuz you don't want to start using your freezes like on turn yeah. 4. That's more of a late game thing. You don't want to be freezing one minion. So the giants can be really tricky for the freeze mage to deal with. Also, Handlock now has two heal bots. Lotheb sometimes, and Melganis. That's true. Yeah. So, so much healing is in the uh, the handlock that this matchup traditionally was really favored for the mage, but it's starting to slip back towards 50-50 or even in handlock's favor, a lot of people say. Yeah, I mean, Demon Handlock is doing a really good job. It has a really <laughs> solid tournament result. Yeah, a double owl to take care of Doomsayers yeah, or silence your giants to push eight damage when they're frozen. That's super huge. Yeah. yeah, so many ways that they can deal I mean, if I would be face. six, so I wouldn't be too happy about my hand because I usually you want to start with like cycling cards, but you only have the blood mage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and blood mage is one of the car of these cards you rather have it for burst. Yeah, in especially matchup. in this matchup. Yeah, yeah in particular. Mm. Ah, feels ah like secret is never what you want to see. Meanwhile, on Alesh's hand, he doesn't have any of the power four drops yet, but he does have Lotheb, which is a really key card in this he matchup. He mulliganed away. Emperor. I mean, you just want to get giants here. Early. M oh wow. Okay, that's, that's really a good, good top deck for Zixo. Early mountain giants. They are the key. Yeah. Uh, Twilight Drake's not bad either. It's half as powerful, but especially with the coin. Yeah, because you can coin one out and then maybe have another one. Oh no. Oof. <laughs> Double secret. Uh, oh, that is. You can never be happy about that. You can see. Look at Zixo's like face. Complete disappointment. <laughs> it looked like fake. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's bad. Um, yeah, you coin out a Drake. You wanna, you wanna like put pressure on the freeze mage as early as you can. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And a 4 8 does a pretty good job of putting some pressure on. Yeah, okay, that's an excellent draw right there. Yeah, do you play it this turn or do you kind of. I think you space it out to try and ping it. Because card draw is just so important in this matchup. You need to find all your little burn pieces. So I like this by uh, Zixo being patient with the Acolyte of Pain, spacing out to make sure you can ping it and get two cards off. Yeah, of that's true. Um, do you just Argus there? No, he doesn't like it. Yeah, I wouldn't have mind the Argus personally. I mean, it's like it pushes up to five and protects your um, face. Yeah, yeah, so then it forces the trades to have to happen so you can exactly. just hit face with the Drake. Because in this matchup, particularly, like, um, Alex is not a thing because mm -hmm. the Handlock normally damages himself low enough. Yeah, and then the Scientists and Small Minions can get chip damage in and your burst potential gets a lot more likely. <laughs> yeah. Um, Where going down 20. Mm -hmm. He, the thing is like, that's actually a thing. You have like, um, there are some key cards against the freeze match. It's double heal bot and um, low fab. Yeah, and he's got most of that. He's got the heal bot and the low fab already. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, and uh, he's got double heal bot actually. He yeah. He has double heal bot, low fab. He has all of the key cards for it. Yeah. Uh, so looking pretty good for the warlock actually as. Zixo hasn't even started to construct the burn combinations yet, and he's pretty much run out of card draw. He has just remaining this Accolade of Pain for card draw. And Alesh really holding onto this Owl, not really prioritizing stopping uh, Zixo's card draw, but instead saving this Iron Beak Owl to maybe push his own initiative later, take care of things like Doomsayer. I mean, the problem is you're getting crushed by Doomsayer for Snow if you don't hold, hold this Owl. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So but you're getting crushed by this Acolyte of Pain because he's getting three cards off of it, and that's his yeah. only card draw source at the moment. So. so oh, there's the Doomsayer. There's the Doomsayer. So that Owl is going to be really handy at taking care of that Doomsayer. Did he just draw Malganus? That's a good card. That is a pretty good card, yeah. Oh, no, no that's it's true. Yeah, it seems like that. It's also not too bad. It helps you heal up. Sometimes. Usually the Freeze Mage can still burst you from 15, though. That's like their whole gimmick, right? Yeah, but sometimes it's just you need like the extra 5 to stay out of Pyroblast range, something sure. like that. Sure, yeah. When you get the Freeze Mage in desperate situations because your board gets so big that they got to do weird things. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a long match and interesting as well, I think. Both of oh, the yeah. players catching up good answers, so... Mm -hmm. It is like, I think nowadays one of the... This matchup in particular has a really high skill cap. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's all, like, there's so many times where, like, if you heal too early, then uh, you get Alexed and die. And if you heal too late, then you just get bursted with, like, Thalnos and Frostbolt Ice Lances and die from, like, 19 or so. Exactly, yeah. So it's, like, really hard to figure out when you're supposed to play the heals, how to squeeze them in while m remaining tempo. And then the Freeze Mage side as well, you got to figure out when are you going to try and set up for these lethal pushes, when are you supposed to push. That is interesting. He's going for the aggressive line. I, line. I don't mind that because he... He recognizes Xixo is struggling a bit, yeah, um, the early flame strike. This is, uh, this is a weird turn to Lothab on because uh, it allows Frost Nova to completely stall down the board still. Mm -hmm. Like Lothab one turn earlier, Frost Nova can't be played. Lothab on this turn, Frost Nova can be played. Gets to but uh, he's not even going to go for the Frost Nova. He's going to hold back on it and just try and set up a heal pot Doomsayer turn using the Doomsayer simply to absorb... Uh, seven damage because he expects his opponent to have an owl at this point yeah in the game. i mean the owl is coming down here um it's kind of interesting i kind of like saving this frost nova trying to go for that archmage frost nova play maybe on turn 10 yeah be really strong against uh handlock because a lot of them have cut the uh siphon soul now so that five seven body can stick around and if the owl has been used on say maybe this doomsayer <laughs> <laughs> then uh that 5-7 can be really hard to deal with while your board is completely frozen and can generate a lot of fireballs to really I mean, help If you want to really game. put on pressure, you Hellfire here and play a Molten alongside of it. That's greedy, though, but... That is pretty strong. <laughs> that is a lot of pressure. Yeah. It looks like Alesh feels too threatened by uh, the current board state and is going to get one of the heal bots out. It makes a lot of sense. 16 is really low. Yeah, I mean... One of the cards I think Alash really wants to get here after he used Healbot and Lofab, it's Maganus. Mm -hmm. That can really turn around. For sure. Um. Melganus makes you immune to damage, so they have the Freeze Mage player has to take care of it, and they usually have to sink one of their burn spells into it to kill it. So it just gains you a lot of life. What about a second Doomsday? Oh man, Sixo is drawing blanks. Yeah, he's drawn all of his secrets pretty much. He has drawn all of his secrets. So this like scientist is not going to pull a secret. It's like so huge because now he drew the second barrier. He, 
He has to spend three mana to play the secret and a cycle. Yeah. This is like insane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get a loot herder. Explosive uh, sheet. Interesting. But it means he probably cut Pyroblast, right? Yeah, it usually is the case, yeah. It's that anti paladin tech. Yeah, there's not that much pressure on the board, honestly, from uh, Alesh. Getting out oh. of Frost Nova. Apparently, Zixo disagrees. He assumes this is a lot of pressure. I don't like using the Frost Nova here because you break up that Antonitis Frost Nova combo potentially. But uh, he's going to go for it. Maybe he's trying to just do Antonitis Frostbolt Ice Lance next turn and just start fireballing away from then on. He's just going. Um, I think he's in search of the Emperor, mm -hmm. trying to stall as long as he can. Okay. Um, the problem is, like, the Handlock will not have a problem with developing the board over and over again. Yeah. A and he's out of freeze now. That's a big thing. Yeah, that is huge. The, using the last freeze is always scary, but there's Emperor drawn to the hand. Does it help, though? I mean, yeah. you can stall another turn. I don't think you're getting procced quite yet. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's only 8, 9, 10, 14, 17 damage on the board, so he needs to find another 8 somehow, which he has... He actually has enough damage to pop him because he has double Dark Bomb Hellfire. Exactly. He has, like, all the burst in his hand. <laughs> yeah, uh, every every last bit of it. But, so uh, we play Emperor here, right? I guess. Uh, you are definitely getting popped, though. But uh, maybe they're too afraid to pop you and they feel like they have to heal bot because the potential burn you could deal because everything gets Emperor reduced. Yeah, that's something you have to be aware of, I guess. Because he didn't. He had so many cards in his hand holding. What can it be? It has yeah. to be burst. But yeah. uh, actually, no burst. It's all the secrets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just, um, yeah, drew blacks. All right, Emperor comes down. I mean, it's always really nice to reduce um, Frostbolt Icelands along with Antonidas in your hand when you play Emperor because it gives you, like, free fireballs. Yeah, for sure. And you can also play, like, an Ice Barrier, but if he's getting popped this turn, then that might be quite a lot of trouble. Well, he's not quite getting popped because the Lesh only has 24 after the, uh, the minion was taken out by the ping. He has a second heal button in hand as well, right? Yeah, he does have a second heal button, but he can't play it with all that stuff. But Getting down that. So he has to actually be patient and wait for one, one more turn. I, there's no reason, like... Yeah. That's getting dark bombed, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. You definitely can't let the Emperor stick. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Normally <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah. You could draw... Oh, oh, that's a really good draw. That is insane. Wow, that Antonidas is going to do work. He's going to be able to stop the board, prevent himself from getting popped, generate three fireballs along with it. This game just went from looking very grim for Zixo to looking very good. Yeah, like, I was was about to say, if there's going to be a Frost Nova... <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, the three fireballs in the hand now. A Lesh all the way down to 15 health, so a Frostbolt off the top for Zixo could spell lethal. Uh, so there is one thing, right? How, how do we remove this mage? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That Antonite's Frost Nova combo is uh, really hard to beat sometimes, especially without Siphon Soul in the deck. So, hmm. Wow. Yeah, you can't kill it. That, that, is, a, that, uh, is, that, is, that is usually a game, especially yeah. in this situation. It's mm -hmm. like Infinite Fireballs is pretty tough to beat. Dude, it's a pain. <laughs> Dude, it's a pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely a pain. Um, wow. Uh, do you do you have you play the Malganus? Sure. Hope that works out. Uh, Probably gets fireballed. I mean, he's got infinite of them. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay, but this is not looking too good. Yeah, but you still I think you still do it. I think it's still the strongest play. Uh, maybe he's going to go with Molten Giant and Heelbot instead. That's also a very strong play on the board. It's actually more stats, huh? That sets up for the pop. It's way better, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, both set up for the pop, right? So but, go uh, there. Yeah, that's... Casually drawing an hour six damage. Like, not a big deal. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Zixo is going face. He's got the second block. So he can do 12 damage this turn, and then block, and then do 12 more damage, and then do 12 more damage after that. Sounds good. <laughs> 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 no, um, 
This is usually how this matchup goes, but he has the Jaraxxus to recover and the Maganus, so that's... Yeah, he does have a lot of healing in the hand. He has all the heal. Yeah, every heal. Double heal bot, Jaraxxus, and Melganus. So he might be able to outlast this. That's the thing. He just The damage might not be smooth enough to be able to uh, to kill a Lush. Sixo needs to pick up like a Frostbolt or something that can get that solid 15 required to really finish the game out. I mean, you're just looking for maximum damage, so you might as well just double fireball the face here, because oh. now you're missing one damage, right? He's going with the tradey route. Because the, the, the giants are trading into your Archmage anyway, so that doesn't matter. Is he going to be able to uh, avoid getting popped this turn, maybe? Is that what he's trying to do? 20? He has 20 life. 20 life, yeah. And then so... The Drake and the Healbot trade into the Antonitis, and then he's got 16, 19 damage. Mm. So I guess, yeah, he is successfully... Oh, he has, he has 19 plus, uh, plus 7. 26, right? Uh, well, he can't use the uh, the extra reach out of his hand, because then he's not healing, and then he's dead to the fireballs. I mean... Oh, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> fireballs hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so he's... Wow. He's yeah, this is a well-played by Zixo there, just to... Uh, Setting him up into a situation where he, oh, he knows, really, he knows really the heads. only heal options cost nine mana. Because yeah, the only ones yeah, that no, are it's were really heads up. Yeah, yeah. The and he one. has 30 damage in the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 30 is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's usually the point where a hero dies. Yep. If you're not garish. So, yeah, Zixo is avoiding being popped by one health by uh, correctly using the fireballs there. Oh, that play was really nice. Yeah, that gives him an extra turn to disperse damage to Alesh, and uh, that's the extra turn he needs to be able to beat Jaraxxus, and that's the last heal from Alesh. That's it. I that, mean... Yeah, he's, Lothab's been used as well. That's that's it, unless he draws Kizan Mystic right here. He doesn't draw <laughs> that. No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I mean, maybe. It would be so funny. Nexus champion Sarad into Flair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alesh is going to use the Jaraxxus. I mean, it's kind of a fight. Like, Zixo is going to be able to re-equip the ice block and send two more fireballs at the face, allowing him to finish with the third fireball on the following turn. And that's going to be game, unless we do see some crazy, some tech crazy cards. stuff. I'm <laughs> not expecting that. Like, uh. Yeah, it could happen. You never know. If there is a Kazan Mystic now coming up, Fireball. Oh, whoa, he's going for the draw here. I guess he only has to use one fireball when ice block this turn, so might as well draw towards more stuff, just in case you need it. I mean, Alesh kind of knows it's, ki it's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw. I mean, if you look at, it, at his face, he might just not run it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, but and all is uh, kind of too late. Would have been useful. It definitely would have been useful. Ah, uh, Drexus is sorry. That game was on fire. Yeah, and Zixo is going to take this match. Um, I have to say, really well played by Zixo. Mm -hmm. um, the one turn where he actually prevent from popping, Yeah, that was insane. That was insane. Yeah, he knows his opponent needs to use a 9 mana heal, so he knows his opponent can't actually do the extra 1 damage to pop him. Very well played. Understanding his opponent's deck and his own deck. Yeah. Be able to take advantage of the situation. That sounds like Zixo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so score tied 1-1 one to one going into... The next match, Zixo remaining on the Freeze Mage, Aless pulling out the Druid to try and stop him. Do you keep the Emperor here with the Cycle? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, I want to say sure. because... It's you already got the Loot Hoarder and the Arcane Intellect. What more do you want? It's it's like um, Emperor is one of these cards which can give you the edge in this mm -hmm. matchup. Yeah, definitely. When you can get an early to Emperor down, especially after like a Doomsayer or something, yeah, exactly. you can just snowball this matchup and actually win against Druid with Freeze Mage. Yeah, it happens. It's mm. it's not like as unfavored like against warriors, mm -hmm. but Druid is a matchup you can win. It's not too bad. But it's, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's but pretty bad. It's bad, but <laughs> <laughs> it's winnable. It's winnable for sure. Sometimes you can make it happen. Alesh trying to make his dreams come true here against the freeze mage and so Zixo trying to stop him. That Mulligan as a Druid, yeah. Okay, you just go for yeah, the wild. Just growth. get the wild yeah, growth every I time. Mean. Piece uh. of cake. Um, he might have gotten away the Shredder, and now he's only there with 7 drops. That can be a problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh seven much more 7 I drops. Lucky number 7, though. He's got 3 7s. Do you actually uproot the Ancient of War in this matchup? What? 
<laughs> I mean, it's a, you you know, have, you're, you're aggressive, right? Yeah, that's too aggressive, man. It'll die to a fireball. Oh, I feel bad. Man. Nah, but it, if he did it, that would be really cool. I would enjoy watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. I just want to see it. <laughs> that would be good. Scientist coming down for Zixo. Obviously an ideal two drop for him. This hand from, from the mage is really yeah, good. Yeah, the hand from the mage is insane. We can see a really close game here. I'm excited. And the hand from the druid is not that great. I mean, he had wild growth, but he's got nothing following up after that until turn five when he can come down with Azure Drake. And that's more of a cycle card than a tempo card, so it's kind of slow. I mean, in the end, he will just miss the four drop. The Azure Drake is a good pickup, though. Yeah, it's not a bad one, but missing the four drop is very brutal. This yeah, is the hurts. point where Druid's supposed to be uh, kind of like seizing the board control, and he's Whoa, losing board control. Oh, the second the scientist. Yeah. One secret drawn, though, which is kind of unfortunate, but Pre still. Pre-Smash can do some work if it's drawing well. Oh, yeah. It's one of those decks that if it draws exceptionally well, it's really hard to stop. I think there's one card to catch up as the Druid, uh, as the Freeze Mage here. It's actually um, the Arc Mage. Okay. Yeah, Archmage with this hand would be insane. You already got the Frostbolt, the Ice Lance, that and swipe. two Fireballs. That swipe, though. That, don't you swipe that? Isn't it like uh -huh. a swipe? I guess he's going to just probably swipe it next turn. <laughs> the problem is, like, next turn the board will be gone. Because he, he, will, he will do the value trades now, right? Yeah, but are you that upset about it? Uh, I don't know. I usually... Try to not give the freeze mage these kind of value trades. Like this is so nice. You trade, True. you yeah, get the card draw and the secret up for free, and you remove the opponent's mm -hmm. body. Yeah, yeah. Usually you want to make them forced to use their burns. So they don't have it for later. And the reduction on the spells or on the cards, like it does not actually. He does not like have an advantage by that because he will still play boom. Yeah. <laughs> boom is threatening. Freeze Mage usually struggles a lot with Boom. It is a big body on the board. 9-9 nine, nine in stats alone, and then the Boom Bots effect always goes face pretty much against Freeze Mage. <laughs> dealing a ridiculous amount of damage. So, Sixo is kind of blessed with a really good hand. So, how much damage do we see from a Freeze Mage here? We have uh, 11 with the Frostball Double Ice Lens. It's like 17. Yeah, he can coin out Alex next turn, and then try and kill him the turn after that. Yeah, but the lore is there... I would be afraid as a Druid player here because <laughs> that's scary. Yeah, yeah, that is very scary. And if this dragon burns your face, I'm going to be really scared. Yeah, I mean, it's a body you still have to deal with too, which is annoying. And it looks like Alesh is going for clear play this way without doing the trade. Makes sense, makes sense. You charged, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You always charge against Freeze Mage. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, always try. I mean, it does make sense to taunt against Freeze Mage. What, what are you taunting up against? Yeah, exactly. There's no Leroy. Yeah, they don't run that card. Alex coming down. Zigzo trying to close out this game really quick. Going to be met with the Ancient Allure to kind of slow him down a little bit. But uh, Alesh will go up to 20 well with the Ancient of Lore. Mm -hmm. 21 even with the Hero Power. Yeah, and, but Zigzo is in a point now where he can just start sinking Burn Face and hoping he top decks more. <laughs> I guess the last burn card here, uh, he has a Frostbolt and a Fireball left. I don't think there is a Pyroblast because of the Explosive Sheep. Sure, sure. He has the, the Blizzard, so he can stall a Board Freeze to get himself an extra draw that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, just start launching maybe the Fireball this turn with the Blizzard. And just trying to sneak in as much damage as he can. He's going with Swipe. Yeah, I think it's kind of smart to keep the 7-7 seven, seven body intact. Mm -hmm. um, but you're losing one health point by doing this play, and that might actually be crucial. Might be, might be. So we're getting a flame strike does nothing. Yeah, it does nothing. He's only has um, six, nine, seventeen damage. Eighteen with the ping. Not sneaking in a ping this turn. We but, just uh, getting the accolade down, trying to get two cards off this. Maybe find the last burn spell required to finish this game out. Whereas Alesh desperately trying to hold on. <laughs> I mean, you have to pop the block at some point. Like, the Freeze Mage just does whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. But um, he has no cycle left. No cycle left, yeah. And no uh, no pieces of the combo. This is the point where you really want those pieces of the combos yeah, so you can actually yeah. kill the opponent. 
I mean, you actually want the full combo. The pieces are not doing too much most of the time because your board is frozen. Yeah, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, sure. That's a problem. Um, that is not an easy turn. I mean, you would like to cycle these rafts, but you can't really. You're afraid of dying a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to give the Freeze Mage more cards for sure. You could cycle a Wrath on your own minion, maybe. Like maybe cycle a Wrath on the 5 3 to try and fi get closer to your combo pieces and then clear the Acolyte with the other Wrath and then develop a minion and hero power. You definitely want to be trying to hero power every turn. Gain that armor, get out of reach. It's of really that important. Spells, yeah. yeah. For so sure. the best pickup for Xixo is the fireball, the magical fireball that wins him the game here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is what he's going to do. He is going to cycle the second wrath and uh, then play this Druid of the Claw. I called that play. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why you were playing in this tournament. <laughs> um, oh, did he miss the attack on the Druid of the Claw to the rope? Yeah. Wow. That is, that is unfortunate for him. That is an important attack for sure. Hmm. The problem is, like, if he top decks a Force of Nature there, it's not popping the block anymore. That's yeah. a big deal. That is huge. I mean, he knows that you see it on his face. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Four damage is important. Uh, he thought a little bit too long on that turn. Zix was able to pull out a Blizzard to stall another turn where he can set up a Loot Hoarder, try and get a little bit closer to that Fireball. Eleven cards remaining. Odds are getting pretty good that Zixo's is going to be drawing this Fireball pretty soon. And once he hits that Fireball, that's going to be able to do... Uh, three mana fireball and then a four mana fireball for 12 damage, leaving three mana remaining where he can then frostbolt, ice lance, ice lance, and ping. This, in a way, is not going to do 22 anything. damage. So if he gets the other fireball, it is still lethal, right? I mean, the thing is not that Xixo is actually threatening lethal with another fireball, it's also that Alesh is running out of threats. Yeah, Lesh is running out of threats for sure. He top takes an Innervate, which is not a very good card. It is the worst Shrek. card to draw there. Yeah. And you still don't have... Like, is he just running one combo? Is it like maybe Ramp Heavier Druid? Oh, wait. Did he already use a Fireball? Did he? I don't know. No, I have no clue. But he wants one. He definitely wants one. Yeah. Whether he used it or not, he wants it. Oh, man. Like, that's for sure. Sapcasters. Wow. <laughs> There's no way he would not want a fireball, but it, he must have used it because he's using fireballs for trading. He's focusing on board control with this loot hoarder, and that loot hoarder is doing a good job dominating that yeah. board. That is a, <laughs> that is a loot hoarder. That's a good boy. That is a good boy. All right, so uh, I guess he's looking for Antonitis then. Mm -hmm. That's how he finds the other fireballs. I Yeah, um, the problem is... We need uh, we need to figure out how to get to this Arc Mage because how many cards are left for a Freeze Mage? There are only nine cards left, and that is an Arcane Intellect that could help a lot oh. to getting towards that. So I get a heal. That's oh, actually not a bad pickup. Good. Helps some stalling. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Along with the with the Ice Barrier, that helps. Oh yeah, he's got lots of healing, so lots of stall, and only six cards left. So Antonitis will be coming around the corner when she comes. We got several options. We can go with the um, Ice Barrier. Sure. Or then we're not playing Healbot. Or we might just go with the Doomsayer Frost Nova to keep the pressure off the whoa, board. Whoa, whoa. Nah, nah, you don't need a Frost Nova. This, this is a 2-3. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, what are we Frost nova -ing? No, okay, okay. I, I was um, thinking because you have the board, uh, you have the um, initiative on the board. Yeah, I, I like this. Just Healbot and then Doomsayer is what I would do. Or Healbot and do nothing. I, but I would play the Doomsayer. I mean, it kills... The two, three, and the next minion that would potentially be developed. Yeah, or, an, or maybe tank seven. Uh, but uh, there was no ki um, keeper yet, right? Um, I, th I, don't I, think I don't. I so. don't think so. I don't no. think so. Yeah. No. How many cards are left for um, Alesh? Alesh is thirteen cards remaining. Still hasn't drawn a full combo set yet. Yeah. But if he does, it is going to be eighteen damage. Keeper drawn. So uh, I guess the Doomsayer would have been neutralized. But instead, the keeper's going to come down aggressively. <laughs> aggressively <laughs> on the heal bot. Yeah. So if the arc match is drawn, I think this match is over. But also on the other side, I think Force of Nature is going to be a good card. It's going to be good, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Because well, he's got another ice block, too. And he's only got six cards left. He is going to find the final piece of damage eventually. It's pretty unfortunate if you're picking up the, um, the combo so late at the game. Yeah, Especially yeah. against like this matchup. But like even the combo isn't enough now because Zixo has the the barrier, he has the second block, 
He has a Frost Nova for stall. So I, I think he just has enough time to get every card in his deck, find the Antonitis, win the game. The barrier is a huge deal, yeah. It's but just like an hour like eight heal. Yeah, yeah. The only way Zixo like fumbles this game is if like maybe Antonitis is the last card, and then when he generates fireballs, Alesh pops him or gets him exactly to one, and then he takes one fatigue damage and dies. That might be a thing. Yeah, that's like one of the only ways, and that requires Zixo's Antonitis to be the exact last card for something like that to happen. I mean, what we have there. And oh. it is not the last card. <laughs> it's the Archmage. That is the game. No, I don't. I don't see him coming back now. Like he can't even remove it. Yeah, he can't even kill it. So mm. he only needs one fireball, right? I mean, unless you have a good start with the wild growth, uh, missing a four drop was kind of crucial, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, like six still stalling it out well. Yeah, for sure, stalling it out is very good. And he is going to use both the Ice Lances here on the face. Setting Alesh down to 12, and he has 15 damage that he can deal next turn with a follow-up Fireball in case Alesh finds the second Ancient Lore. So and that's it? That is it. Falling to the Freeze Mage once again. So we Freeze Mage. So the Warlock and the Druid gone, and the mm -hmm. Warrior's banned. So we only have the Mage left, and I guess it's Temple Mage, right? Uh, I would assume so, because he... Well, it could be Freeze Mage. No, it's Tempo Mage, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know how you tell, because, like, either way, you're queuing Druid into Zixos Freeze Mage, or you're queuing Warlock into Zixos Freeze Mage. You're not queuing Freeze Mage Mirror. So, it could be uh, Tempo Mage, it could be Freeze Mage. It looks like it is oh, a Freeze Mage, judging from the start. Mage, yeah. 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 That's kind of... The Freeze Mage Mirror is really interesting, but we, what we see here is Alash runs Pyroblast, and mm -hmm. Zixo doesn't. Zixo runs Explosive Sheep. One of those cards is better in the Mirror, for sure, yeah. but... It's going to come down to a lot more things than that. Really, it's like whoever can get one of the first threats established first, like either Emperor Thorasan or Archmage Antonitis yeah, or exactly. Alexstrasza first. Like whoever gets one of those things first usually has a significant edge in the matchup because the opponent has to really react to that while they can just kind of snowball their lead. What you got here is like um, Sixo with double fireball in a starting hand that doesn't help in this. You don't want to have yeah, it. You don't want to have that. Um, and Lish with at least one cycle card. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the uh, the arcane intellect, which is gonna allow him to draw two cards. Doomsayer is sometimes okay. No, Doomsayer is garbage in this matchup. You, no, it's it, it's it's better than having the fireballs there because you can just play a Doomsayer on five and de deny them like their emperor dropping. Okay, that helps. That helps at least. Right? All right, what? <laughs> I think you just throw the explosive sheep out here because you don't want it in your hand for when you start getting like accolade of pains and things going crazy, but. I guess it could feed your opponent's Accolade of Pain. So. I mean, having the double intellect there is, like, huge. Yeah, that is. That is good. You're going to draw a lot more cards, have a lot higher chance of finding the key cards that you need in time. But uh, Zixo's already got Antonitis in his hand. So if Zixo's able to pick up maybe Emperor, then uh, Zixo could still easily take this game. Because, like, card draw just increases your chance of getting the key what cards. What is the free mana card he has there, be, um, alongside of the Ice Lance? He has Acolyte. Acolyte, okay, yeah. it's on our cycle yeah, card. He's got so much card draw. Yeah. So Lesh has the card draw, but Zixo already has one piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. So there's ups and downs to both players' sides. But, uh, like, Lesh could easily draw a bunch of cards, and it could still happen that Alex, Emperor, and Antonio. The problem are that um, Zixo has, even though he, uh, if he draws the Emperor, he has not, like, a Frostbolt or an Ice Lance to create more Fireballs. True, true. But, uh,. Yeah, I mean, Freeze Mage actually sometimes has, like, difficulties dealing with, like, Emperor and Antonitis if they're played, like, really close to each other because, like, their only real good answer is, like, fireballing it, right? Exactly. So, sometimes it just sticks. <laughs> but no, we see Alesh has enough burn to deal with uh, those sort of threats. There's one prob so problem. Cards. You have 20 cards in the hand to actually cycle them, so you have to get rid of some cards. Yeah, he's so got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards. So he is fireballing the dome. <laughs> I mean, why not? It's okay. Yeah, um, it, it makes sense. You want to get rid of that. And uh, usually with this hand point. from Alice's side, you might just able to, um, to um, burn him down. That is true. You're going to be trying to like hit him with Pyroblast to try and pop him later on. Gets rid He's of the Blizzard. Not the best card in this lineup. Acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah, yeah, yeah you want to have the Ice Block up here for sure. That's a card that's actually good in the mirror. Uh, yeah, for sure. And... Uh, Still holding on to this Arcane Intellect and this Accolade of Pain because there's too many cards in his hand to try to That is a card. Cycle. That is really yeah. nice. Zixo definitely needed and that one. There's and the there's Emperor. the Emperor. So even though Alesh had a lot more card draw, it doesn't mean... 
Well, he didn't actually was able to use all of it because his hand was too full. Kind of because he was forced to save it onto his coin, I guess, because he values it so highly for coining the Alex. Kind of might be uh, coming back to bite him. Because so Zixos can be cycle. first. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. he's not using it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah he can't. He has to well, get rid I of mean, the coin. Yeah, he has to get rid of the coin and just start using the cycle. Like, yeah. it's too greedy to be holding the coin. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So Xixxo wants to pick up, like, cheap spells now. Mm -hmm. Even, like, um, the Frost Nova is fine, I guess, but Frost Bold or Iceland just gives him, like, extra burn. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely. And he's got the, the Blood Mage Thalnos that he can save as basically a burn spell, because when it's Emperor, it only costs one. One mana spell power is pretty good. Yeah, it's really nice. So, if I'm looking at the rest of Sixos lineup against a less um, re remaining freeze mage, um, I guess Patron is a little bit favored. He also has Druid left. No, Zixo has uh, the uh, Druid spent, so he only patron. has Patron left. Yeah, so Zixo has got to be feeling comfortable about the series as a whole because Patron generally does pretty well against freeze mage. Yeah, you go into fatigue, and if freeze mage doesn't have like this super good hand, it's normally unfavored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Emperor Thorson comes down for Zixo. He's getting the first Emperor Thorson, so that puts him at a little bit of an edge in the matchup. Debating whether or not he wants to play Thalnos or Ping. I kind of like Pinging, because I like using Thalnos for extra damage, but I can understand playing it, because it's your only cycle card remaining. And you just want to hit your other cycle cards. So you got to cycle into cycle. So it makes some sense there. So, has a Flame Strike. Th that is actually, that happens sometimes, that you actually draw too much... Um, of your cycle cards, too many of your cycle cards, and you're just not hitting the important pieces like mm -hmm. Alex, Emperor, Archmage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can cycle all you want, but you have to, at the end of the day, finally cycle into the key cards. Exactly. <laughs> and Six of Finds the Frostball, that, yeah, that is huge. Feel good, man. Yeah, he's going to have enough damage to, to pop him and then pop him again and probably pop him again. So, what is the last game plan from here? Yeah. He has to remove the Antonitis, right? There's oh, there's Alex. Alex. He, his game plan could just be Alex him and say, all right, I'm going to pop you first. That might actually happen, right? Yeah, because uh, Zixo has... Uh, ooh, what is not he, going with the Alex. He might go... Okay, what, what you can do here is like maybe go with the defensive route and let him pop you. And then Alex yourself back yeah. up. Yeah. It might actually... Mm, might but be he no generated more. two fireballs, though, so that's kind of tricky to pull off. Yeah, but... I think two fireballs are the line where you can say, okay, I can maybe outlast him, but four fireballs, there, there it's getting ugly. Okay, okay. So Zixo has 24 damage, and Alesh has 14 points of heal with the uh, the he the uh, Alexstrasza, and then eight more points of heal with the heal bot. So that is like 20. Might be enough, right? Yeah, it might be enough. 22 How many cards of heal? Of, uh, does Alesh have left in the deck? Alesh is remaining 12 cards in the deck, whereas Zixo has 13. Mm -hmm. So Alesh is hitting Fatigue first. That's also an important factor. And he just played an Acolyte. And he just played an Acolyte, so he is definitely hitting Fatigue first. What Sixo could do is just start pinging the Acolyte off like a really... Yeah, yeah. He could. I mean, he just drew the heal bot. It looks like he's going to use the heal bot here. Alex Straza has not even been used from Alesh, though, and Zixo's heal bot's been used. Okay, that's really smart. You just um, heal yourself up, and you say, yeah, you can you can Alex me down to 15, but you might <laughs> want to have it on your face. Huh. Um, what well, I don't like about that... Um, yeah, if Alesh has the second ice block here, though, Zixo doesn't have the second ice block, so then Zixo would be in a lot of trouble. That is the winning line for Alesh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now the Alesh has to try and find the second ice block before Zixo finds the second ice block, because Zixo can pop him here with the fireball, fireball, fireball. Fireball, fireball, and <laughs> fireball. Yeah. <laughs> uh... And then he's got the fourth fireball to try and finish if uh, Alesh doesn't either find heal bot or ice block. It's over. Well, he's got, he's got two outs and ten guards, so it's not over yet. It's not over yet. He's on four... So it's a 2 out of 10. It sounds mm -hmm. like 20% for the win. Well, it's not even for the win. It's just to stay alive. And he doesn't hit it. He just Wait, you can Acolyte Ping. Right? Yeah, he can Acolyte Ping to try and find Heal Bot. That's a 1 in 9. So he's going for the 1 in 9. Try and see if he can find it. And... Duh. Barrier is a dud. Wrong it. secret. So You can't even bluff it. <laughs> yeah, you can't bluff <laughs> it for sure. And uh, he knows Zixo has another Fireball generated by Antonitis. And so he knows he is dead. Might be just 
He is yeah. going to throw damage at the face and then concede. Zixo taking the series on the back of the Freeze Mage play. I mean, I think the big talking point uh, here was like the Druid actually losing against the Freeze Mage. If yeah. that doesn't happen... That doesn't Lash happen too often for sure. Druid might just take it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Whenever that happens, the Freeze Mage player has not only really good position in the series, but definitely has a bit of a boost of confidence. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> he just does, didn't get the combo. That's quite unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So we got upcoming... Um, yeah, yeah, next we have the decider match between Zixo and Gara. Zixo and Gara both one and one gonna be playing against each other. I believe they already played against each other. Yeah, and yeah. I think Gara won the first. Yeah, series. Gara won. So Zixo back for Vengeance. Gonna be a little bit of a rematch. It's gonna be to a good one, who, I guess. Uh, makes it out of groups. The other one going home. Gonna have to spend the rest of their weekend getting drunk and partying. Uh, that's unfortunately. Not, that's not too bad. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's how it goes. Yeah. And, uh, well, we'll be right back with that match, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. And uh, look forward to the epic rematch of the two Shaman players. I want to see that. Yeah, Shaman all the way. Anyway, see you soon, guys. Stay tuned.